he gets 10. <laughs> I picture him about midpoint. He kind of starts to get a little bit like, oh, God, oh, my. And, and uh, the twins are like, keep moving, move forward. Hey, this is the Chief Bonding with Board Games and RPGs, and we will be using Into the Odd, an OSR, so old school renaissance um, RPG game where it's uh, more heavy on theme setting, not on like crunching mechanics, or so I read. Also in conjunction, I'll be using uh, UNE or UNE. Um, description uh, link in the description or what it is in the description and the mythic game master emulator um, to answer simple yes or no questions and maybe even to give me a little bit of theme although there are a lot of tables and charts in the back that i'll use whenever possible for into the odd as well chris mcdowell's the designer and let's just jump in so before i started um i uh, created a character real quick. Character creation is fast here, and you're only doing three things. If I can find the page that I saved, there it is, a simple little paper. Um, so what I knew I was going to do was this solo adventure um, without a, oh, what do they call them, referee, guide, I can't remember. Um, and I just rolled up on three stats, strength, dexterity, and will. That's all you use here, and you'll be doing saves with a D20. Now, this is a little bit new to me, so um, I may make a few mistakes, but hopefully it's fairly simple. And I love that the game's basis is kind of the world you're in. Um, so when I rolled up my character, I uh, actually got HP 6, uh, so is health. And uh, any damage he takes will come right on to that and then bleed over to strength. Strength's 13, dex 10, and willpower 10. Um, you then roll on a kit, and the kit is based on that HP and the highest numbered stat, 13. And I got long axe, D8. So when I do damage with this long axe, it will do the damage of a D8. And then it is bulky meaning it takes two hands and uh, and it can kind of encumber me a little bit. Then I got rum and a bomb. Now the idea of this game into the odd is that that kit is supposed to suggest kind of who my character is. I thought about it a little bit. I thought, okay. Um, and the, the, the long axe made me think Viking, but this is set like um, I don't know, 1890s, I'm in this town of Bastion. Everybody's migrating to Bastion. It's a weird, odd town. And I thought, I have a long axe, rum, and a bomb. And then I thought, you know who this guy is? Um, I think he's a normal city dweller with brown hair, but he wants to be a Viking. <laughs> he, he desires to be a Viking to the point he's even thought about braiding and dyeing his hair blonde. He hasn't done that yet, but you know what he did find? A uh, spiked helmet in the vein of, and I can't remember, I looked it up, I was thinking he had seen a, uh, an opera, and uh, that's what had kind of hooked him. And of course, um, that's the photo that you've seen when we came in, and the name of the play he saw, or some close version to it, since we're in the land of make-believe, is Der Ring des Nebelungen. I don't know, but he saw an operatic play in that style, with the helmet, with the horns, and thought, I want to be a Viking. Now... I picture him of normal stature, but in this game, I thought I'm also running solo. And it says if you're running with a, sl a small party or by yourself, you can create a, uh, a companion or two to come along with you. And for some reason, I immediately thought twins. And they're supposed to, they get an HP one. Then you roll up their stats. And I thought they're twins, so they'll be the same. Nice and simple. 10 strength, 7 dexterity, and 9 willpower. And you give each of them uh, some kind of weapon. And I gave their twins, they both wanted a six-shot revolver. And then something else odd or weird hit me, and I thought, um, they're little people. <laughs> yeah, 
That's what crossed my mind. And our Viking, I'm just going to call him Viking. He's not even getting a name. Um, he might pick a name that's Vikingish later. Um, he um, ran across these fellows. He liked the fact that they make him feel even bigger and more Viking-ish. And they wanted to join him because um, he's got kind of a, he's very strong. And his whole search is looking for arcana, which are like magic items. And he wants to hopefully find Viking-ish type arcana. That's what he's looking for. That's the lore he follows up on. So the first thing I wanted to do is go to a chart, I believe is on 130, because it talks about what, what's beyond the darkness. And it talks about a feature. Well, I wanted to use the feature as a, um, there's hazards here too, but I wanted to use the feature as kind of the, the lore that he heard about in regards to uh, an area within Bastion, which is this odd, strange city that he's going to go explore. So we will use, if I can find it, we will use uh, percentile dice here, and we're going to see what what is this lore that he has seen. 30, 30 even. What do we got here? Ooh, a forge. I like it. I, that actually works perfect. And I've got one little piece of paper here. That's all I have. Um, it may not be enough. I may need to get more. Um, a forge. It sounds very Viking-ish, and I'm going to say that what he's heard is there is some kind of old abandoned forge that he has heard lore about in regards to the making of of like uh, heavy hammers and axes and um, it harkens back to that Viking time and he's also heard there may be some arcana related to that and off he goes because he's picked up some tips and he's headed to that area and it's in an old industrial part, I'm just making this up, of Bastion land that has been long since abandoned. Think kind of our, uh, our Detroit um, Steel City kind of thing where it used to be a hub of activity back in the, in the iron forging era, but that time has since passed. And in he goes and walks into this area. Now, again, I will be using Mythic Emulator to answer some yes-no questions um, and to give me some random events. And as we move in, I may even grab, I thought I had some close, as we move into, it's not quite dungeon-like, but uh, into this industrial city-like, I think I want to use some post-it notes to kind of track out the path as we go. And I'll probably take some shots, no, not probably, I'll take some shots with my phone so that they can flash up on the screen as you go because I do not have a second camera coming in. Let me get some of those post-it notes. All right, as we enter into the forge area or the industrialized steel girders I picture everywhere, um, and it's, both kind of haunting, yet sterile, and I don't know, just that metallic iron and rust, and you can hear water dripping, and hello, and condensation, and it's kind of dark, but I want, um, I'm going to do an event meaning and action just to give me something else about this area. So it's going to be 16, and yes, I'll pay attention if I roll doubles. I will be using the random event system here. Uh, inquire, okay, I like that. And 67, 67, Inquire Ambush, wow, okay. Well, if there's an inquiry on the ambush, I believe it's going to be the brothers. Um, the little fellas are um, concerned and ask old Vike, <laughs> maybe that's it, Vike? <laughs> they asked old Vike is what they call him. Uh, hey, um, we've got 
a bad feeling about this. I hear them saying this at the same time, kind of like in jinx mode. And, uh, and Vike says, uh, well, yeah, uh, look where we're headed. Um, I'm worried uh, half uh, about this steel even coming down on top of us, but this is where the forge is. So they're just nervous about a, uh, 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 an ambush setting. So I think the question is, what would the, what would the brothers, what would the brothers do? They're asking, they're concerned about an ambush. Um, I think um, they decide that uh, they're actually going to fan out in front. And they're, because of their smaller stature, um, they can actually move through girder areas that aren't a place that would be probably set in ambush because anybody setting it would think, well, nobody's, nobody's coming through there. It's like a, a little three foot area. And uh, so they move out and um, move through and just draw up as just a bunch of like X's and, and girders that are, that are sitting in a very industrial type site. And they're basically moving out in front and reconning. And so the question is, I'll ask a yes, no. Um, we're going to have a chaos factor of five. So in mythic, there's a chaos factor starts at five. And uh, then I will determine if something is unlikely or likely scaled both up and down and your odds move around. And I'll tell you what the odds are as we roll on it. And I think um, their concern is very just. They've used their, their, uh, their, uh, they're using their wisdom under uh, their willpower of uh, nine, but they, they came up with, hey, we're just going to move out and take a look. I think it's actually um, likely that if there is an ambush, um, well, first of all, we'll do 50-50. Is there even an ambush? 50-50 means literally, if I'm below 50 or below, uh, it's a yes. 45, so yes. There is an ambush afoot. They picked up on something, felt something. And then uh, the other question, and I think it's very likely because of their approach from an odd area, a tight, cramped space, maybe they're spread out, who knows, that they have spotted this ambush when the ambushers have not. But again, we're going to roll on it, Chaos Factor 5. Um, we need an 85 or less. And we have a 47. So yes, not only... Um, is there an ambush set up, um, but they've spotted it. Um, so I think we will use, well, hold on. I think, well, let me look. There is a monster element here, but I don't know if we're at a monster level yet. All right, I'm just going to make a determination. We're not even going to look in here. I believe what these are, these are just scavengers that are in here. Um, they're always scavenging for whether it's metal or stuff or taking advantage of folks that are coming through. They'd seen the group coming. They'd set up, thought these will be some easy marks that we can take down. And um, because the ambush is spotted and the pistol, let me go look and see what the pistol rolls for damage. It's a D6. Uh, so um, they're going to... Um, both fire on this group, um, and not only are they looking to do damage, but they also believe just them reversing the um, ambush is going to probably scare these little vagabonds away. Um, but um, we'll see what damage they do. I picture these as very weak groups, you know, kind of in starvation. Um, so they're not going to be hard to hurt badly or make them run away. They both fire. We've got a four and a two. Um, I'm going to say that they're struck using this rule. Nobody's actually like shot and killed right on the spot. Um, but I'm going to put both of their aims are true 
And with a four, one of the people are more seriously injured. The other one runs away. The number four person simply falls down. And this ragtag, literally wearing rags group, flees in terror. These explosions have gone off from odd angles, from weird places. And at that time, old Vike comes rushing in down what would have been the ambush site and sees them fleeing. He's got his, he's got his helm with the horns on it. <laughs> this is odd. And he comes in and there is the fellow that's down on the ground. And I think they actually, um, uh, Vike, uh, decides that he's going to question him, um, with a little bit of, uh, like, Hey, um, I'll bandage you up if you'll give me some information on the location or point me in the direction of the forge. And I actually think this is pretty much a sure thing for this person who's been wounded. That's a 90. So we're going to roll and see. That's a deal this person wants. His buddies just ran off on him. Uh, it's a 21. So in Mythic, uh, an 18 or, yep, my eyes are bad and it's small. An 18 or less would have been an extreme yes. Um, but that's just a yes. But we now have some information given to us on where this forge is. Now remember, these guys... Um, would if they find arcana they would be taking off with it and selling it or using it or doing whatever they want to so this isn't like um just finding the forge itself means oh there's there's this magic item or a cane item um there's going to have to be some interesting things done in the forge but i think our fella tells us uh and gives us some directions to hey there is a an area he doesn't know it as the forge but it's called it's called the um it's called the dark zone and uh he says uh they there he has never been to the dark zone um but it is rumored to be um an ancient working area and somewhat hazardous and toxic okay hazardous and toxic Oh, Vike, uh, he has a little bit of uh, gauze, and he actually bandages up and binds the wound of this scavenger. No idea if he'll survive or not. Um, I think um, the twins, uh, these are six-shot revolvers. They take this time to also reload. So uh, they're, they're loaded. This is the only weapons they carry are these six-shot revolvers and uh, some other little sundry items that they have with them as well. I want to see, as we move in the direction of this, um, where this forge was pointed out, this would be a new scene. I'm going to roll a 10-sided die. If uh, the chaos, if we hit the chaos factor of 5 or less, there'll be either an interrupt or it'll be an actual altered scene. It is a five odd number, which means we're going to have um, an altered scene. So we don't, as we venture off, we actually don't get to this forge right away. Something completely altered is going to happen. Um, let's see what it is. We're going to roll on this event, action, and subject chart. 45. Celebrate. 62. Disruption. Celebrate disruption. All right, I'm just going to go with that. The, the twins are like giddy. They're excited. They not only did they um, kind of smell out the impending ambush, they themselves came up with the plan where they moved through these small spaces coordinated, both fired, both hit um, their targets, um, one of them a little bit better than the other one, and there's a little bit of braggadocious things going on, and they begin to celebrate, uh, which includes um, drinking some of their own rum, because not only does Vike have rum, because if Vike got rum, surely these twins would have picked some up as well, 
they are not ready to leave their spot. <laughs> and so they actually sit down with the fellow that's been bandaged. They offer him a little bit of rum and they begin drinking rum and they begin even questioning this person on like, like very odd narcissistic type questions like, um, you know, did, you didn't even have an idea I was over here before I shot you, did you? And it's not done in like a mean-spirited way. It's done in like a, man, look at us kind of thing, like they're ecstatic. But at the same time, the scavenger hasn't had any decent rum. And this is just decent. It's not good. And so he's like, nope, I, if I would have known you were there, I would have ran. And so they end up having like this, and Vike wants to get going. <laughs> but these guys are like, mm -mm, nope, we're having a little celebratory disruption. And they sit down and they just, they just chill. They just hang out. Now, I kind of want to know how bad, I mean, this, this, first of all, somebody could come back. But before we get to that, I'm more curious, is, is our wounded fella, the rum may help dull some of the pain. But is he getting better? Um, well, no, let's say this. Is he getting worse? We'll just do it 50-50. So 50%, 50 or lower, he's getting worse. Ooh, 16. That is not, 10 would have been extreme, but yeah, he seems to be to be getting worse. And um, the twins don't even notice. So um, it's possible that... Um, uh, if this continues or there is no medical help handy, he may just pass away right there. Um, does the revelry continue even though Vike wants to get going on his way? We're going to do 50-50 again. I don't know. Are they going to hang out? These twins still hanging out? 17, yeah. Yeah, they're not going anywhere. We're still not on extreme yet. Um, I want to see, um, I believe this this scavenger was pretty severely wounded um i think it's actually somewhat likely 65 or less that uh that he passes out right in front of him due to blood loss 61 yes just barely he literally passes out but the twins have been giving him rum the whole time and they're not even cognizant that it could be blood loss. They're just in there. They're literally partying it, partying it up. Vike's not drinking, um, but he's not willing to move forward on his own either. He was actually pretty impressed with the way they sniffed out this, this uh, um, ambush. And I think he finally just says, well, let's just make camp here. Um, very odd. They they actually find an area where some of the steel and, and things are kind of creating um, a dry area. And, um, you know, they have their little blankets or whatnot. And they kind of curl up and, uh, and go to sleep. Does Viking go on watch? The twins are, I think they've passed out as well. Um, does Viking stay on watch? And if he does, he's going to be sleepy tomorrow. Um, or does he sleep? You know what? I don't know. Um, what would he do? Um, I think he would stay up. But my question is, he tries to stay up. It's been a long day. Um, I want to go with it's unlikely that he would fall asleep. But maybe he's on watch and he could fall asleep and something could happen. Uh, unlikely, 35 or less, 70. Nope, he does not fall asleep. But I want to make note... He um, gets no rest, gets no rest. So if we run into anything with like, um, I think critical decision-making under the wisdom, um, I want to bring him down just temporarily because he didn't get sleep. So temporarily, I'm going to put him as a nine on the willpower side. That's just a little suffering thing he's going to have for not getting his sleep. Um, when they wake up, I believe, um, uh, the twins, when they wake up, I think it's almost a sure thing that the scavenger has passed away. That means it's a 90 or less 30. Yep. Um, the twins kind of wake up, um, I think a little bit of a hangover. 
and uh, they kind of go to rouse the scavenger, almost like he's part of their party now. And uh, they're kind of nudging him and, hey, come on, man. And uh, nothing. And one of the twins reaches out and kind of uh, turns him over and realizes he's cold and no longer with the living. And I believe there's a bit of a somber moment for them, almost like this had been a fake, fun little adventure they're on, but they've killed this guy. I don't know how that'll go. Um, and now I believe they get back on course. So um, uh, it's a somber mood. Vike gets the twins to head in the direction that uh, that uh, he'd gone in. I think it's even more likely with the rum flowing and maybe even with some of his faculties leaving him that uh, he told them more lore about this dark, forbidden forge place. I think it's 50-50. Let's see if they got even more information. Ooh, five. That is an extreme yes. So yes, as the rum flowed, they got filled in on all kinds of um, lore about this this dark place, which Vike believes is the forge. I think what they were filled in on was um, that there will be um, um, metal striking metal in the night, and you can hear the clanging of the hammer strikes, uh, reminiscent of a forge, although the, the scavenger doesn't say this, but it's it's a terrifying sound that rings far and wide throughout the area, out of the dark area, and it and it's terrified the scavengers, um, and no one goes to see what it is. They believe that it's some kind of of ghost um, that's in that area, but um, details of where the sound emanates from uh, have been given. And it includes um, an area that has um, just a single, like, one-foot board that is about 15 feet long and laid girder to girder. And it appears to be the only um, pathway that does not even appear to be secured from a girder structure to what is known as the dark space. So... We can kind of, well, not kind of, we'll call this like a known trap. So this is 15 feet. Um, it's one foot. It's Think of it as a balance beam over absolutely nothing. So this would be a dexterity save that these guys have to go through. And um, we'll just do it one at a time as they walk the area. I think Vike is going to go first. So we're going to do, um, he knows it's there. This is simply a dexterity balance check. He has a dexterity of 10. You roll d20s for saves on this. So let's see if he can walk across this okay. Whoo, he gets 10. <laughs> I picture him about midpoint. He kind of starts to get a little bit like, oh God, oh my. And, and uh, the twins are like, keep moving, move forward, get your balance. And he just kind of stumbles forward and gets across and is like, oh my goodness, are you kidding me? Um, and he gets across. Now what's interesting is our, uh, our twins actually only have a dexterity of seven each. Um, and their wisdom is only nine. But I believe the twins working together, they're used to being almost a single element. And the one twin breaks out a little bit of rope, not even 10 feet, just like five feet of rope. And they tie off to each other. And the whole deal is, is we're going across together. And if one of us falls, the other one's got to make sure he drops and holds on to the board or, or, or drops on the other side so they create a little pendulum. I like that. <laughs> that would be interesting. Um, and as they move across, I'm going to roll for each one of them. So the first twin, ooh, he gets a 15. So right off the bat, we're going to cover that that is a fall. And uh, as, as he falls off, his brother immediately dives off 
to the other side. And that rope comes down and they're just dangling, tied off. And I don't know what it is. It's like little Christmas bells or something just hanging in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I can see this. Um, um, you know what they start to do? This will be, well, I think as they're holding on to the rope, they begin together to swing. And as they're swinging, the rope starts to, they'll put a little oomph in it and it'll slide a little bit forward on one side and then whoop, and they start this little crab walk that's going to move them across. I like it. However, I want to see, I think there's still got to be, there's got to be a save here because this is a little hazardous as well. I think this, this weight shifting could be hazardous for the board. Let's move away from the 20 and just ask a yes, no question. Does all this rope jumping, sliding, whatever the heck they're doing uh, with this thing, um, cause the board to start to shift or move and it could slide off and then everything goes down and Vike would be stuck. Um, let's go with unlikely, but that still gives it a 35% chance that it could happen. So unlikely, 43, it is close. The board's bouncing a little bit as they're doing this little crab walk with the rope thing. Very bizarre. Uh, synchronized almost, you know, whoop, whoop. and Vike sees the board kind of bouncing a little bit, especially as they get closer to his edge. And he actually kneels down, plants his hand, and kind of locks the board in on his side. And as they get close enough, um, he's able to reach down and pick both up. I think this would be a strength test. So let's do a strength test because you couldn't just get one, or maybe you could. All right, we're going to do a strength test for Vike. He's a 13, so this is pretty good. I can see him being able to just pick them up. Two. Oh, yeah. He reaches down as they get close, grabs him by the scuff of the neck, and just whoop, and sets him down Viking style. That's even what it looks like with the horn and everything. And I think he's like, you guys are crazy. <laughs> you guys are nuts. And they're like, ah. Eh. He goes, please do me a favor. Tell me we're not going to sit here and have a little party after you guys pulled that little thing off. And they're like, no, we're good. That's a little scary. Now, um... I think they're into the dark zone here. So again, the same thing. Um, why would it be the dark zone? I think there's heavier concentration of girders here. I'm seeing it almost like, uh, you know, not quite a spider web of girders, but just, just a complete maze of girders. So much that even some of the light isn't coming through. And as they move further and deeper in, it gets just a little bit darker. We're not talking pitch black, but we're talking shadows being cast everywhere by these girders. Um, I think, do they start to hear the hammer? Do they start to hear that hammer crashing down? Let's just go 50-50. 69. No, they do not. So the question is, as they move forward, or where would they go? What is around? Um, is there any, what are the dangers here? Let's just do, I want to do, again, a random check. I believe there's a danger. I don't know what it is. Nine. Malice. Perfect. So something with some malice. And 27, 27, a project, malice, a project. All right, the only thing I can think of with malice, a project, is that the Vike and the twins start to see what looks like um, areas of girders that have foot traffic. Um, in other words, like some areas are dusty and dirty and, and, and rusty, and there's other girders that clearly show 
almost like you would see a path in a forest. Uh, you can just see the foot traffic. And they're concerned, and it almost appears as if someone's using this dark zone for, I'm going to say, some kind of project. And the project, I think, would be like a, um, you know, do you have a, uh, I don't know, is, is, it a, is it a warlord who's using the dark forge to um, maybe make weapons? Hence the hammering at night. Okay, I think this is somewhat likely, 65, 43. So that is it. They are seeing first paths, literally paths through the girders um, by heavy use, and they follow some of these carefully. And they realize there's activity, a lot of activity in here. And I believe what they get to with this role is they, they actually kind of see that there is um, I, I don't think a whole lot of people, but I, I think what you have is maybe um, eight metalsmiths that are um, look like they're sharpening um, axes and swords and and there's a f uh, they're using a forge that's lit with a bellows and and they're they're simply making weapons. Nothing here looks mystic at this point. It literally looks like, ooh, somebody is making weapons in this area. Um, now these smiths don't look like soldiers, but they look like they do metalwork, blacksmiths. So they look um, rather stout, strong. This wouldn't be something that would be, even though they don't look like trained fighters, it wouldn't just be, you know, uh, run over these eight guys. Let me list eight guys. So at the very least, they've learned some information and maybe at the most they could steal some weapons out of here if they're able to. So, what would be the action? What would Vike and the twins do here? Again, um, this is not something they would rush into. They would, could they fight? Yes. Um, would they fight? I'm going to say no. So, they, they're going to kind of move off to the side and hope for a shift change or something. So is there, as they, they move off and they take a short rest, um, nobody's, uh, I think actually even the rest is going to bring um, Vike's willpower back up to 10. So they literally move off and take like a, a two hour rest in a little nook off the beaten path, get the willpower back to 10 and they creep back into the area. They're not hearing any of the industrial sounds. Um, the hammer strikes that were coming out of there definitely were just, um, uh, you know, blacksmiths working on weapons of war and terrifying everybody around there. Um, so I think as they creep back, 50-50, uh, is anybody there? Ooh, four. That is an extreme yes. Wow. So is anybody there? Extreme yes. So when you get an extreme yes, it means something on top of just is anybody there. Um, so this tells me that the, I think you have whoever the leader is, whoever is running this thing is checking on them. And who might this be? 57. Create... Okay, create 35, create 35, legal matters, create legal matters. Um, this just tells me that uh, not only do you have like the sovereign, whoever that is, checking in on these cache of weapons that are literally stacked and, and bundled, swords that are bundled and axes bundled and spears that are up against the wall and, and bundled. Um, this operation's clearly been going on for some time, but there seems to be either like uh, an accountant or, or um, almost like a scribe that is 
checking off the, you know, hey, yeah, they made 100 spears, or yep, we got 50 axes, or whatever it is. And it seems to be that that is what is going on. Interesting. Legal matters. So there's this, it, it looks like there's payment going on right now, um, and they're witness to it. Now, um, the sovereign isn't moving um, unguarded. So there's like another five heavily um, armed and armored bodyguard with um, the sovereign and his um, legal expert, his accountant going over the thing and money's being divvied out. So that poses an interesting problem. Not even a better time to attack now. Um, and what could they gain from this? Well, I think this will just have to be knowledge. Um, there's no way they're moving out of their concealed location. What is interesting, though, is I think they pick up on some knowledge is that when they're done, the two groups move away in completely different areas. Uh, the bodyguards pick up these bundles, and uh, so it looks like there's, you know, bundle of spears, bundle of swords, uh, axes and whatnot, and they head off in a direction, and the, um, the metalsmiths even head off in a different direction, not from this weird little place with the, the little bridge that the uh, little one foot plank that, that our group crossed. So that tells our group there's other ways out of here. Um, and I think our group is going to shadow the Smiths. They want nothing to do with these bodyguards. They look like a very dangerous lot. And the Smiths are ecstatic. They've been paid, paid well. And they don't seem to even be taking much note. They're not trained warriors as they leave. And our group is following them. Now, I have a thought. As they're following them, just hoping to find an exit or whatever they gain, um, everybody's left the forge area. I believe, we'll roll for it, that there's a clanging, a hammering. And... A mythic hammering. I want to do this as a, uh, a fake question. I think it's almost a sure thing. I can feel it. But that still means that's only a 90% chance. 30. So yes, um, the groups have moved out and they're actually working their way through um, some pretty intricate areas and our little group is following the Smiths. And I'm feeling like they're about 10 or 15 minutes away from that that forging area and all of a sudden a hammer a metal on metal strike Ching! and the smiths freeze in their tracks and and look petrified and terrified all at the same time and there's some grumbling and talking and um you can just tell that they're chills to the bone and they they move out, the laughter, the joking stops, and they, they move out. However, our crew turns back. They want to see this thing. And as they respond back, the question is, they know how to get back to the forge. They're guided even by the sound. And the question is, what do they see? What do they see when they get back to the forge? All right, there's a weird creatures chart. Make sure that's the one I want to use. Yes. So there's a weird creatures chart that we're going to roll on here. So the clanking, the hammering, it's, it's almost deafening as they've gotten closer. It is four times louder than when the Smiths were working, and it's somewhat terrifying. So I'm going to roll first on the nature and then the form, and this will be this creature. 39. Wow. Hyper-robotic. Okay. Interesting. And then on the form. 
14. A sphere. Hmm. <laughs> okay. So I'm picturing this, this steel, almost like Sputnik. <laughs> this, no spikes though. This steel, um, like stainless steel sphere. And it's this hyper robotic of, it's literally just hovering in air and it's over an anvil and it's just clang and it's just dropping clang and it's sending this out and there's nothing around it but it definitely has this like um i mean it's perfectly timed it's ro robotically timed on bam and it's and it's and it's hammering that that anvil boom and the twins have fingers in their ears and I think um, Viking has stuffed cotton into his ears. And um, I think they've got to all do a willpower save at this point in time. It's that deafening and bizarre. So we're going to do Viking first, willpower 10, 20 sided side, save 6. The first twin, I picture him with a bowler hat. So just he's wearing a bowler hat. He needs a 9. He got a 14, so no, something's happening to him. And a 16. Both twins are somewhat driven mad by this clanging. Um, so the question is, what do they do? Where do they go? Let me check my time. 20. Um, I think, uh, let's go 50-50. Do they, do they flee? Do they, they just have to get away? It's too loud. 50-50, chaos. 88, and we have a doubles that we're going to have to resolve as a random event. So no, they don't flee. So then what is it? I think, um, um, let me see if the random event gives me an idea of what happens. So I, I, I picture them just like they're losing it. They're, they're, they can't get the noise out. Uh, they've got a migraine. And let's see what the random event is. Hold on. First, we've got to go to the event focus table. Um... Let's see what this roll is here. 24 NPC action. An NPC action. So the only NPCs we've had up to this point would be the blacksmiths. Um, oh. Oh yeah, I think the, well, well, I was thinking with the sovereign return hearing this noise. I know the other scavengers wouldn't. Yeah, let's go with that. Um, well, let's roll over here and see. It's an NPC action. See if we can get guidance. 97, transform. Hmm, maybe this is the fear, sphere itself. And 36, bureaucracy. Transform bureaucracy. <laughs> um, transform bureaucracy. I have no idea what transform bureaucracy would be, so we'll just leave that random event alone. We're going to just dismiss it, because that's what you can do with Mythic. I don't know what the bureaucracy would be. I do think we're back to the twins, and they're just... I, I, think, I think they both just start screaming and yelling. And um, I believe... The, the sphere kind of stops its robotic movement and almost turns. It has no face, but, it's, but the, the group gets the feeling as it turns and kind of faces them that this polished stainless steel ball sphere has recognized their presence. The twins' hands are buried in their heads, and what does Vike do? Um, I'm torn between he goes and tries to hit it with his axe. <laughs> oh, boy. 
Why not? He is a Viking. I think he's going to try a strength roll and just see if he can just strike this sphere with his axe. And the, the banging stopped, but the twins are still kind of like holding their heads like in migraines. And he's going to strike this, spear, uh, this sphere. First of all, I guess uh, a save roll. 13 on the button. <laughs> so he hits it. It clangs and it, what does it do? I don't think it would destroy it. Ooh, zero. Attainment. And 99. Wow. Anger. Attain anger. I think this fear, um, I think it, it immediately after it's hit, it kind of like moves out like it's struck and then it immediately makes a beeline for Viking moving at speed at Vike. He's going to have to make a dexterity save. He's got a 10 and it's coming right at it. A 7. As, it, as that ball flies at him and it's coming right at him, he's able to duck out and it goes right over his shoulder. Now, how in the heck do you stop a metal sphere? <laughs> it's like a giant cannonball that's coming for you. Huh. Uh, I would imagine if it does damage, it would do a D8. So I'm going to say if he gets hit with this, it's a D8 damage. Now, he actually swung on the sphere. He did hit it. Um... I didn't think he did any damage to it, but I think what I should do, and I'm not totally up on all this yet, I need to see, I guess, it could do damage, or it did do damage. So I think I actually messed up rolling to see, I rolled a save to see if he hit it. He would have hit it when it flew. How much damage did he do? And... He only did two damage to it. The question is, how much HP would it have? I think it's going to have 10 HP. Um, it's a metal sphere, um, but I think as he hits it, he does two damage. He can see there's, there's a dent. Um, and so it flies and kind of moves by him. And as it comes back, I think he's going to swing at it again as it flies to him. He was stunned as he hit it that it came back, but now it's almost like a batter who's ready for the strike, and he swings at it again. A seven. Wow. So now he's got it at nine. So he's done nine HP. He's hit it again, and he puts a real clang, a real dent in it, but it comes for him again, and he has to use his dexterity to dodge yet again. The metal sphere, a seven. He dodges it as it flies by again, and I see it as it comes by. He comes in with this backswing and strikes it and gets a one, which is all he needs. I believe he actually cracks it open. And what kind of arcana is running this thing? I don't even know if this makes any sense under arcana. But I like it. Um, I think um, I want to look through here real quick. So let me just pause and find something that would match floating or moving. All right, I've got it. A victory globe was inside. So the stainless steel case, why it was hammering, I don't know. But inside is a victory globe arcana, which says swear an oath aloud. The globe gently guides you in the direction that would help you achieve the oath. But if you fail to complete it before the end of the day, it lashes your mind with D12 will loss. Wow. So the group, Vike, has, it's a smaller globe, a victory globe, and he's able to tuck that into a little pouch inside what I, th I see as like some kind of bear jacket thing. And he's gonna have to figure out exactly what this thing is. He doesn't know yet, but it is a victory globe. 
So um, the group decides they're going to exit the way they came in. The twins are still migrained and a little shook up. Um, I'm not even sure they saw what he recovered. They were just thrilled that the sound had stopped. And so is this episode. Hey, if you enjoy this, do me a favor. That's the first time I played into the odd and it felt odd and it felt narratively fun. That was interesting. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please thumb it up, subscribe. This is just a little one shot. Although if you guys comment and like it, I may come back to old Vike and, uh, and the twins kind of like their group. And now they've got a victory globe. I want to know what that does. However, for those that are following my, my evil Twilight 2000, that is not over. That will still all be resolved and, and continued. Uh, but I could see me jumping in and doing little one shots every once in a while with this because that was really entertaining. Thanks, Chris McDowell. And uh, if you want to learn some more, go check out Chris McDowell's um, uh, blog. He's got a, a blog that's awesome that talks about um, playing this style. And I definitely uh, listen to um, his podcast as well, which is really interesting. So again, thanks Chris McDowell. Great game. Great book. See ya. Bye.